inside lane missing exits and glued to the pavement between the lines i'll keep my gate straight ahead as the last stop flies by no more waiting for the gun to fire no more walking through revolving doors i've gone around once and i don't need to go around anymore break away forget your sober case stop dwelling on empty words stop stalling in the doorway and cancel the cruise control to free.
happy Sunday everyone! I've changed my mic settings a wee bit so if you can't hear me do let me know. And I've put the music up a little bit louder because I felt like you weren't actually able to hear anything at all. So hopefully it's all good. Hi Tron! How are you today? Are you having a good Sunday? It all looks okay here. You would think by now I would have this under control, but definitely still, still trying to get used to it. Hello Dinah doll, how are you? Right, so you can hear me, that's good. And I hope you can hear a bit of music as well. Yes, I'm good, thank you. Having a nice chilled weekend, not done very much so far. And going to, well technically I was going to make lunch for today in the stream. And then I realised that I wasn't starting until 2, so by the time I'm finished it'll be dinner time. So this is like meal prep for tomorrow. <laughs> So I'll have lunch ready for tomorrow, won't have to worry about that, so that's good. Plus I'll have a bit of a dessert for dinner tonight. So, it's all good. Okay, so, assuming that my sounds and everything are okay, I'm just going to slowly get started. So today, we're going to be making, it's one of my favourite soups. So it's roasted red pepper and tomato. Um, and some really, really quick and easy, kind of a cheap sausage roll, but really, really nice. I think, Tron, you're in Germany, aren't you? So I don't think you get sausage rolls over there. I don't think it's a very German thing, but it's a very traditional British thing. And it's basically just sausages wrapped in puff pastry, baked in the oven. Really, really good. And a great, like, quick and easy snack or lunch. And they're nice dipped in the soup, so that's the plan. So my first thing is going to be to chop up a load of volume of music seems to be good for me. Good. That's ideal because I'd realised that I've got this music on all the time and then I would check the videos after and you couldn't hear any music at all. So I'm not quite sure where the music went or if it was just too quiet. But I think I had like my laptop volume up too high. So for me it seemed really loud, but obviously that wasn't what you guys were hearing. So, another delicious menu. Thank you very much, I do hope so. <laughs> this is a nice, a nice quick easy one. The soup's really quick and easy. The sausage rolls are really quick and easy. The sticky toffee pudding I have never made before. Oh my god, <laughs> I saw sticky toffee fit in, yep. Um, yeah, so that was a, about an hour ago I decided I was going to make that and then had to frantically check I had all the ingredients. But I think we're okay and I'm getting a cream delivery later, so we should have enough of everything. Okay, let me just write maybe under a different name. See, I actually lived in Germany for almost three years in total. I don't think I ever saw them or anything really like it because I suppose pastry, unless it's sweet, you don't really get a lot of pastry in Germany as far as I was aware anyway, I never really came across a huge amount. Okay, so the first thing is we're going to chop up all our veg and stick them into the oven to roast. I just absolutely love soup and there's one thing that's quite nice about autumn although I don't like the like the crappy weather it's a good excuse to have some nice like soups and like chili and stews and things like that and it's definitely getting cold enough to start doing that are you a fan of sticky toffee pudding pudding dina doll I'm guessing yes <laughs> 
So am I, and it's something I've not had for ages, and I've never actually made myself. But I had dates in the cupboard that needed used up. I actually have brown sugar for a change. So I thought, why not? And then that's a nice sweet dessert for, for dinner later. So I'm just gonna chop all of this up fairly roughly. So at the moment I've got two, two red peppers and four tomatoes. That's all I'm gonna do roasted wise. And then when it's finished, I will check and see how much sort of soup we've got so far. And I might just add a tin of tomatoes if I need to kind of bulk it out a little bit. But this is very much a day of using up all the leftovers in the fridge. So it's just whatever I could find that needed used up. But I do quite like that. I quite like just going through the fridge and going, right, what have we got? What can I create from this so that I don't have to throw anything out. If we just go <laughs> forget the rest and skip to that. But then I wouldn't have any lunch for tomorrow. <laughs> so it will be done, don't worry. And we've got plenty of time because if I only did the soup and the sausage rolls, my stream would be about half an hour. <laughs> because it really doesn't take a lot of time. However, the sticky toffee pudding, because it's one I've not made before, I've got a recipe that I I had to look through a few recipes because some of them, well, a lot of them had stuff that I didn't have or had too much of certain ingredients and I didn't have enough of them. So I just kind of looked until I found one that had everything that I had. So hopefully it'd be quite a nice one. I think it's a Nigella Lawson one. I'm not normally a big fan of her, I think it's a wee bit over the top, but the, any of the recipes that I've used of hers have always been pretty good, so I'm hoping this one will be a good one too. And I feel like if there's one thing she can make, it's probably something like a sticky toffee pudding. And I've just realised now that I've not actually had lunch yet. <laughs> I had a late breakfast and then I got myself so confused with stream times that I was thinking that I was making lunch but obviously I'm not because it's two o'clock already and I've not actually had anything so if I make the sausage rolls I might have one of them <laughs> to tide me over. And how has everyone's weekend been? Has anyone been up to anything exciting? Any wee day trips or anything? Did you cook any nice food? Definitely won't be able to sleep during this with that music. I think I'll need to make my own playlist. <laughs> it's not my favourite. So to the peppers and tomatoes, I am also going to add some garlic. So I'll probably do two cloves of garlic, I think. And some, I'm debating whether to roast the onion as well. I think I might do. Just roast the onion and in with the rest of the veg, the garlic, some herbs, some oil. And then in the pot, when we get to that stage, I'm gonna put in some celery, mainly because I really like celery. I really like it in soup. And I've got a big bit of celery that's looking very sad. So I figured that would be a good way just to use it up so I don't have to throw it out. And then that's pretty much it. It's just that and then some stock. And then a bit of seasoning, depending on what we need some of that juice in there as well. I'll get my wee, my wee food scraps bag. See, that's more set Sunday music, I feel. <laughs> 
and we've got some sunshine today. If you've been here before, you'll know how much I moan about the weather. But it's only fair. If you live in Scotland, you're legally allowed to moan about the weather because the weather here is rotten. But the sun is out and it's a good day. So we're all good. Just as I could have shown you chopping, me chopping all of that stuff, but I'll show you the tray in a wee second. Right, so to that we're going to do some garlic. Mm -hmm. Maybe one onion and two wee ones. Get this one on and then you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to do this, this garlic that we got. It's got the biggest cloves in it that I've ever seen. I mean, look at the size. It's huge. I mean, it doesn't look that big here, but it's massive. I'm out in the garden, nice, enjoying the weather. That's what we like to hear. The connection keeps going. <laughs> no worries, I'll be here for a while, so you're fine. <laughs> so I need to try and get another one off of this. And I think, I think pretty much everyone in the chat has subbed. My emotes are hopefully coming. <laughs> I've been on to Twitch on Twitter just to see if, if there's a problem with them or whatever because that's been a week now. Um, but I'm assuming it's just because I'm quite new so... They're ready and waiting, so hopefully you'll be able to use them soon. <gasps> the smell of garlic is just amazing. I wish it just liked me a bit more. I'm just going to kind of squash these and put them in with the veg. And then we've got our onions. I've got two wee baby onions. Two wee baby onions and a slightly bigger onion. And we'll put all of them in. And I think, I mean, you could just do this and put all the stuff in a pot immediately. But I quite like, I think it just gives it a bit extra flavour when you roast it first. Or another way of doing it is you can get, you know, like the, like the jars of roasted peppers. You could use them because obviously they've already been roasted, so you get the flavour from them as well. I quite often use them if I'm being lazy and I have them, but I don't have any at the moment. But I had regular red pepper, so I thought, I'll do it myself. So, and that's it, it doesn't take a lot of time. And then I've got other bits and pieces to prepare in between anyway. So by the time these are roasted, I'll have moved on with other things, so I'll be fine. And then one big onion. I think I would say this is probably one of my favourite kinds of soups. I think possibly my all-time favourite. And it sounds awful. Like it's it's a very specific taste. But it's cauliflower cheese soup. <laughs> Which a lot of people will probably go, that's disgusting. But it's one that I used to get when I worked in a restaurant. We used to make it there and honestly it was so good. I've tried recreating it since. I can't exactly remember what was in it um, but I've got fairly close before. Not quite there but not too far off and it's it's really nice. So I'd say that's probably my favourite soup. This is definitely up there because it's really good as well. There's just something nice about soup. Just being able to fire everything in a, in a pot. And then it's so nice and like cosy and... Cosy and warming. And I'll get rid of all our wee bits and pieces. And then, oh, not... I'll try not throw out the whole thing of garlic. And then we'll season all of that. Right, so 
so we'll season all of this i'll show you that now so i've got quite a big tray doesn't that look good already i mean that's making me hungry already and it smells amazing hello jennifer no worries you've not missed much <laughs> how are we today so i've just oh hydrate Oh, where's my water? There it is. Thank you, Dynadol. Cheers. It's a bit early for wine yet, but I should keep hydrated, so I appreciate it. Yes, if you've just arrived, like Jennifer, <laughs> I've just chopped up the... I've got four tomatoes, two red peppers, two baby onions, and one normal onion, and I've chopped them all up and pop them in to the baking tray and then I've just sprinkled on a little bit of garlic granules I'm going to do some of my mixed herbs loving the warm weather nice is it actually quite warm because it looks as though like it looks nice but I feel like it could be one of those ways that you go outside and you're like actually it's really a lot colder than it looks Had to wait to get into the recycling centre. That's ridiculous. I suppose it's Sunday. That's kind of the day that a lot of people are like, right, I'm going to sort the house out. But at least that sounds like that's one item ticked off your list. It's okay, she's not started the sticky toffee pudding yet. No, we've got a wee minute before that. It's very warm. Good. That makes a nice change unexpected so we're just seasoning our veg to pop in the oven um, and then we'll roast them for maybe about 20 minutes I'll put them in for 20 minutes to begin with see how they're looking because I have chopped them up fairly small they shouldn't take too long so I'll try 20 minutes see how they look and maybe put them in for another 10 I have leggings on a hoodie and we're roasting. <laughs> A hoodie seems a wee bit excessive. But I suppose when the sun's away it doesn't look as nice. Cleared a massive space good. Oh. There's just something so satisfying about getting stuff organised in the house. Right, so have I got everything in here that I want? I think so. I'll do some pepper as well. You are not prepared. <laughs> At least you'll be prepared if you have to go out again today. You'll be sorted. You'll know to get the hoodie off. Hello, bird bass. Happy Sunday. How are you today? Are you having a good weekend so far? We're doing a bit of accidental meal prep today. <laughs> I am um, when I was rejigging my like my stream schedule, I put together this list and thought that will make a really good lunch. And then realized this morning that I'm not making it until two o'clock. So it's gonna be dinner before it's actually ready. Um, so it's accidental meal prep for tomorrow's lunch. <laughs> Get my coffee sipping started good. So is it still morning where you are then? I'm going to see family for dinner. I'm going to do some makeup for the first time in a while. Nice. That sounds pretty good. How are you this weekend? I am good, thank you. I had a, actually a really nice weekend so far. We managed to see some friends that we've not seen for a long, long time. Um, we had a, a very socially distanced get together in the garden. So there weren't too many of us, but we were out in the garden and it was absolutely freezing and raining. But obviously we weren't allowed in the house because there's too many of us. So we all kind of sat at opposite ends of the garden, shouted at each other. And it was really nice. We got soaked and we had to get the blankets out, but it was, it was nice, it was nice to see everybody again. And it felt a bit more, 
Although it was a strange situation because we're sitting outside in the rain and we're all quite far away, it did just feel a wee bit more normal again, which was good. Morning in Texas, nice. So you're not, well, we're half past two in the afternoon, so you're not too far behind. <laughs> Friends, I miss us, I know. I know it's rotten. I don't know how the situation is where you are, but here it's, it's still quite tough, but there's still, you're allowed to see a few people at a time, um, but obviously you just have to stay away, so. So yeah, so it was nice to see some people. Right, so all of my veg is going in for, I'm going to say 20 minutes to begin with, and we'll check it after that and see how it's doing. Oh, you're welcome. Not a problem. It's all about mutual support, isn't it? I'll need to catch one of your streams. But I think, what time do you, or when do you stream? Because I think I've missed it a couple of times just because of the time difference. But I'll definitely need to keep a wee eye out. I find that really tricky with the, anyone I follow in America. It's like, I, I, need, I need to put together some kind of like time plan so that I can figure out when I can actually watch people. <laughs> I've tried to do weekends. Weekends would work for me. Because <laughs> that way I can just stay up. I can have a glass of wine and just stay up. I'm planning on going live in about 90 minutes. So I'll hopefully go three to four hours. Ah, so once I'm finished, you'll probably still be on then. So I'll definitely come over and say hello. I will do. Because that would be really interesting to come over and see your stream. Because what time? 90 minutes. That's what, about four o'clock here? I, that's perfect. <laughs> that works really well for me. <laughs> uh, right, Dana Doll, you'll be excited to hear. We're going to go for the stick top of pudding. Hooray! <laughs> it's always good when a plan works out, isn't it? Right, that makes me smile. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad you're here as well just now. It's nice to see you. Or, well, to see your name. <laughs> Right, so the soup is on its way. Now we're going to make a sticky toffee pudding. Far fast, is that a thing in America as well or is that a British thing? I want to say it's a British thing, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure why I think that. It may well. Sticky toffee pudding. I think it's the pudding part that's making me think that it's British, maybe. So it's like a really kind of rich cake almost, but it's probably more sort of, not juicy, it's more like saucy than a cake. And you always make it with some toffee sauce and then that gets poured over the top. Oh, so good. So that's what we're gonna make. Because I realized about an hour ago that to make just some soup and some sausage rolls, it would only take me about half an hour, so <laughs> I should really do something else to, to entertain. <laughs> and it's one that I love eating and I've never actually made it before. Plus, luckily I, I happen to have pretty much all the ingredients for it in the house, so I'm going to substitute a couple of bits, but most of it I should be able to do okay. <laughs> I think Dino Doll's excited. Yes, so you know sticky toffee pudding. Ah, that's interesting because I honestly thought it was a British thing. But I think it is just that whole pudding bit. And I've had that, not argument, that discussion with a few different people about why we call everything a pudding. Even if it's like a black pudding, which is savoury obviously, or a white pudding, which is also savoury. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna get started on the sticky toffee pudding and my amounts are pretty much going to be based on how many dates I have. So I've got two, two packets of dates with a little bit in each. So I'm going to see how much is in that and then we'll adapt the rest of the recipe accordingly. I've loved European food. Good. So what would you say your favourite European food would be? And it's not common here. I did wonder. It's so good though. 
I'm assuming you've tried it then, if you're a fan. <laughs> oh, nice. I've been to Italy twice. Yeah, twice. I love bread. Oh, so do I. I can't eat it, but I love it. <laughs> so, like, all of that pizzas and ciabattas and focaccias and all of that. European bread is amazing. Although it's funny, I would say that we get <gasps> ideal. I've almost got enough. Um, yeah, like British bread is not known for being good. It's very much. It's quite. Pro I mean, most of it I would say is quite processed, and it's very much like your toast bread you get I mean you do get the odd nice loaf but it's nothing like sort of France or Italy or anything for their bread and then obviously when I eat gluten-free bread it's rotten <laughs> in comparison to everything else like any other kinds of bread it's not the same I don't think I've ever had a proper toffee pudding oh you need to try it it's so good you have a recipe you've been eyeing nice who's the recipe by because this one I got from the BBC website, but it's, I think it's a Nigella Lawson recipe. Cook Illustrated, nice, I'm sure I've heard of that. Um, but as long as it's got dates, treacle. I'm not using treacle because I don't have any treacle. Um, but I'm gonna use golden syrup instead and some dark brown sugar because that's it, you want it to be really like sweet and and rich and stuff. Right. Okay, so I need 200 grams of dates. I have 189 grams. So I would say that's good enough. That, that'll do. America's Test Kitchen is another mother company of cooks. Ah, that's cool. That's handy to know. I love a bit of foolproof cooking. That's my favourite. That's what I try and come up with. If I come up with new recipes, I try and make them foolproof. So that, especially with the gluten-free, that you know that you're not going to have these daft flour issues or um, it's not going to rise or you can't prove it or whatever. But it is just, it just works. Dates are amazing. We, I've just found out this thing recently. I can't even remember where I saw it. I think it was maybe on Instagram. Mm -hmm. That if you get a date and you like cut it down the middle to make it into like a little pocket, fill it with almond butter and then dip it in chocolate and leave it in the fridge. <gasps> it's like little sweeties. So good. So if you're looking for a wee snack or like a wee sweet treat, definitely try that. You made your own gluten-free flour before. I... Not really. I have got, I don't know if you can see it, I've got a Thermomix. So in that you can like blend down like grains and stuff to make it into flour. So I've made, well I suppose it's rice flour before, but just like ground them right down and use that to make pizza bases with some regular just gluten-free plain flour I think it was. And it worked really well. I think because I don't know why it worked better than regular rice flour. I don't know if maybe rice flour has something else in it, but this like ground down rice worked really, really well. It was probably one of the nicest gluten-free pizzas I've had. It was a faff to make, but once I got there, it was really, really good. Yes, the stuff dates, so good. <laughs> Plus, I think you feel that it's not quite as unhealthy because dates are good for you. Almond butter is good for you. And if you use like dark chocolate, then it's all pretty good. Mm, what's the exactly? And these fresh has always been a step up. That's it, like it's, it does seem to, it just does seem to work better, but it's just that try not to be too lazy. <laughs> but yeah, when I'm, when I can be bothered, I do like to, to do that. And I would really like to try and make my own gluten-free blend. Because I think that way then you've got a lot more control over what you're making. And a lot of the time I'll use like regular flour blends that I've bought and it just doesn't work. 
and you think surely there must be a better way of doing that. So I think that's one thing I'd like to do and just, just kind of experiment with it. Right, so apparently I have to put my dates in boiling water. So I'll just put the kettle on. Oh, thirsty again today. I think it's because it's so warm for a change. Right, so I have to set, set the dates in some boiling water and bicarb of soda. Okay. I don't know what that does, but okay. <laughs> and find all the bits in the cupboard. Do I need baking powder? Yeah, that's handy. Right, bicarb of soda, one teaspoon. Oh, this smells from the veg already. It smells so good. Funny, tomatoes were one thing that I used to hate the taste of, and now I could have them with everything. I absolutely love them. Okay, so put the ch or to chop the dates. So we'll chop the dates up. I'm surprised, I thought when I saw my half empty bag of, um, of dates, I thought there's no way I'm going to have enough there. We're not too far away. Oh, Tron. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tron. And happy, happy subs to whoever got the subs. It's not actually, oh, hold on. There we go. Thank you very much, Tron. You are just too much. And enjoy the subs. Team, B. Sultan, Duchess D, Mr. BB, BBI? Ah, BBI. <laughs> Codebreaker and Even Star. Thank you, Tron. You're far too good to us all. <laughs> far too good to us. Been a gluten free brand that you did not like. Ah. Yeah, I've I've had a gluten free flour blend that was grey before. I'm not sure, it might have been the psyllium husk. I've heard that psyllium husk is a good one to add to gluten free flour blends because it helps. I think it's quite sticky, so it does work quite well at pretending to be gluten almost. But then I use a lot of like xanthan gum or I try and use like kind of rice flour. Makes the date lift the pudding in the oven. Ah, that would make sense. That would make a lot of sense. I love that wee fox. I'm just looking to see what channel that's from. That wee fox is so cute, Tron. Thanks, Tron. Yes. Tron is very good to hydrate. Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> It's much warmer, warmer than I was expecting today. I nearly put, oh. Oh no, we're okay. I thought I'd crashed, but I think we're okay. Right, so I'm just gonna, apparently we have to roughly chop these. And. I'm just wondering, does that mean? Oh, Tron. That's me got to my next goal and I can't get Twitch to approve my emotes quick enough. <laughs> but thank you so much. <laughs> I'm hoping they'll be ready for you to use, Tron, because I would really like you to be able to use them, all of you, because I'm really pleased with them. But they're just taking a bit of time. It's, yes. Yeah, I think, I don't know, I think... The thing is, you do tend to use quite a lot of random things in gluten-free baking. 
So are you gluten free as well then, Bird Fast? Have we talked about this already? My memory is shocking, I am sorry. It's a warm one, it is. It's surprisingly warm. I really not a huge run. <laughs> Didn't really understand what was going on. But I thought that was really nice that you paid it forward, Dynadol. I don't really know how to do that, but well done. <laughs> and it's always nice to to support everyone and to to kind of share. So that that made me very happy. Right. So we've got our chopped up dates. I need to get a better place for this this board. That's better. Right. And then I'm going to pop the dates in our bowl and then we want 200 mils of boiling water in here as well Can you see that two hundred mil can we spin if I've got a spoon. <laughs> it's funny, at one point I must have had about 20 wooden spoons and now I think I've got two maybe. <laughs> I'm not quite sure where they disappear to. Right, so that's... Hmm, that looks weird, but okay. So we're to soften the dates in the 200 millilitres of boiling water for 10 minutes and in the meantime I can do the rest of the like the cake batter and then towards the end we add these plus the liquid apparently because obviously I think the liquid will then have all the, the nice flavours in. Keep that just now, I'll need that as well. No, I finally, I'm definitely still, definitely still learning as to how Twitch actually works properly. <laughs> but it's good fun, it's keeping me busy, so it's all good. Oh, you can see that starting to go kind of thick already. Weird. Hmm, okay, I'll stop playing with that now. Um, and then the rest. I'm just thinking, I can't, I really need a fourth, how many have I got, four, <laughs> a fourth camera so I can show you my stand mixer. Um, I can pull that wee guy over. I want to do some makeup on Twitch, but I've no, I've no idea to start. I mean, there is, I don't know a huge amount about it, but there is the, like one of the channels, is it channels or categories rather, is just chatting. So it would probably be on that one, because I'm not sure if there's like a makeup one. But I have seen some people on there, um, kind of doing a bit of, like a bit of kind of get ready with me type idea. Um, so I think that would probably be your best bet. But as long as you're good at, if you like to talk, <laughs> which clearly I do, <laughs> and I think it's it's really nice for meeting new people. So like, I work from home, so I'm in the house pretty much all day every day. So it's really nice for me to, and I, the thing is, I'm making dinner and lunches and stuff anyway, especially during the food blogging, that it's nice for me to be able to do what I would be doing normally, but feel like I've got people to talk to while I'm doing it. And then you do get the same lovely people that come and see you quite often. So you do feel like you're starting to make new friends almost, which I think, I mean, it sounds really cheesy. <laughs> but I really, I really enjoy it. It's really good fun. Body painters, ah, that's interesting. Just make us and chat and some stuff, yeah. 
I mean, I think it's quite good. I, it was funny, um, one of my streams last week, one of the girls who, uh, Sophia the Hobbit, she's on here quite a lot. She actually said that she really enjoyed the stream and she actually learned something. Oh, well that's handy. <laughs> like, I don't feel like I'm as good a, I'm good enough of a cook to teach people. It's more just like kind of watch me try and make my dinner and sometimes fail. But if people can take stuff away from it, you think that's amazing. So I was I was really really chuffed with that. But I don't expect that to happen a lot, especially if you saw the the ravioli stream. That was a disaster. <laughs> And I think actually I've not had a chance to clear out my fridge yet and I think the leftover uh, pasta dough is still in there. <laughs> Learn a fair bit. Oh, thank you. And that's it. It's all, I try and do easy home cooking because that's what I like and that's what I do. So I'm going to show you this because this looks incredible. How good does that look? So I think it could do with a wee bit longer. Everything's quite soft. But I think I'll do a bit longer just to get a bit more colour in it. Yeah. Yeah, it's so nice. And it's, I think especially with the... Um, I've found it, obviously, I've not got a huge amount of experience with any of the other bits of Twitch. But I've found that... Um, especially, like, with the food and drink streamers... They're all so nice <laughs> and they're all so welcoming and so helpful so yeah I'm really really enjoying myself so far. <laughs> right I am um, I'm gonna see I'm not sure no you literally can't see anything there so I think my best option is I'm just gonna put some stuff together and then I'll pull over my wee camera and show you it from there of the music channels too oh that's good that makes me very happy. It's nice to it's nice just to have people be nice. <laughs> but it sounds ridiculous, but it is. So are there quite a lot of music channels then? And do you have anything to do with um because Twitch sings, is that a completely different thing? Because I saw that that's stopping. Um but obviously I've I've not really seen any of that. Just getting started with food and drink channels. Are you gonna do any food and drink streaming or do you already? because I would love to see that. <laughs> That's what I watch, like, all the time, and I'm hungry constantly. The worst part is, quite often I'll watch a couple at maybe midnight here. They'll start at midnight, and I'll be in my bed, like, I'm so hungry. <laughs> but it's, it's my own fault for watching, but I just, I love it. I think it's really, really interesting. Oh, that's good. Who are the two, who are the two other ones? because I'm always looking for recommendations. I said I did sushi. Oh, I love sushi. Actually, I think I might have seen a bit of that. I'll need to go back and check, but I'm, if not, I'll definitely go and watch it. Mainly music channel though. Yeah, that's good. If that's what you like as well. Happy Chef, I love Happy Chef. I think he's brilliant. He was one of the first that I watched as well. And he's just so... He's so crazy, but in a good way, and some of the food that he makes, it looks so good. Cook, cook with Kate. I've heard of her. I don't think I follow her yet. I don't think I've actually watched any of her stuff, so I'll need to go and check her out. Right. The butter and black treacle. So the black treacle, <laughs> we had a bit of a problem with this the last time, so I'm not using treacle because I don't have any. I'm just going to use golden syrup, which is, I mean, it's heading in that direction. <laughs> it's not quite as um, intense as black treacle. I think it's nicer tasting. Um, and then when I used it the last time, I can't remember what I used it for, but I used it last time and it was a bit of a strange colour. <laughs> <laughs> like the consistency of it was a bit strange it turned out fine and I don't think that stuff can go off because it's literally just sugar so I'm just going to use it again and it'll be fine I need to few for webcams and headset yeah 
yeah it's quite I mean you don't need a lot but I think it's quite good to have a wee bit and um, a lot of people have said that it's quite nice how I'm able to sort of switch cameras so that they can see different views and stuff excuse me while I read my cupboard for my golden syrup Yeah, and then um, a few people have said, yeah, that with the cameras, and then I, so I've done a few different live streams, not live streams, but live cook-alongs on Facebook, but for that, it was very much like prepped, and it was like 20 minutes long, so I had a microphone, but I was, I was plugged into my computer, so I wasn't, I was never able to like move from here which was quite difficult and I obviously I couldn't do that in a stream so I then had to kind of look at getting a few other bits and pieces but I'm sorted now, <laughs> I, don't, I don't need anything else. So I have a stream lab, ah, have you got a stream lab? I've got stream elements but I can't remember why I decided on that one, I think it was just the first one that came up and I thought that'll do, we'll take one of them. And you can, ah, I didn't know that one either can't be stuck no no because I wonder about a lot so I would be that would be awful and then anytime I need to go to the oven or wash something I'd be like hold on I can't talk I'll be back in a minute <laughs> so yeah that wouldn't be ideal ah okay that's good to know so far it's been fine for me but ah of course yeah I suppose that's a whole other ball game isn't it I'm glad you found one that works for you though, that's really good. Uh, 75 grams. <gasps> what a day! I think I'm actually going to have enough of everything today. I didn't think I was going to have enough butter, but it's looking good. Right, so 75 grams of butter and then this is to be softened but I hate, I hate when it says softened I always think that's so unspecific <laughs> I always forget to leave my butter out before I bake always oh thank you very much for the follow Karen 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 Please let me know if it's Karen or Karen. <laughs> and I apologise if I've just murdered your name. Oh, thank you, Bird Bass, and thank you for being here. And I will definitely come over and have a nosy at your stream when I'm finished. Happy lurking, and I hope you have a good a good stream as well. Um, yes, so the whole butter thing. I know you're supposed if it says softened, you're supposed to leave out of the fridge. Who's prepared enough for that? That is not me. So I do tend to just put it in the microwave, but Often when I put it in the microwave, I put it in for too long and then it's not softened, it's liquid and that's not actually what the recipe wants and then the recipe doesn't work. So I'm going to put it in the microwave for about, I mean literally about 10 seconds. And yes, my microwave is in a cupboard. <laughs> I've been asked that before, but I have a little microwave in the utility room. just in case it looks a bit strange to you. So there, nothing's happened with 10 seconds. That'll do. Probably not enough, but that'll do. So we're wanting to cream the butter and the black treacle, AKA golden syrup in the stand mixer. So unfortunately, I'll do this quickly and then I'll show you on the other camera. Okay. So that's 75 grams of the butter. And then, was it two, two tablespoons? Uh, yeah, so I need three in total, which I hopefully will have. And again, this looks like something that my granny had in a cupboard somewhere. Yes, 
definitely kind of separated a wee bit, but it worked well enough the last time, so we're just going to go with it. <laughs> I might not show you it close up or you'll judge me, <laughs> but we're going to go with it. So two tablespoons of this and then we have to mix it together until, just until well mixed and then we're adding sugar. So this, excuse me, this is not a recipe if you don't want to have too much sugar because it's it's a very sweet, sweet recipe. It's full of sugar. I mean, that's why it's delicious. But <laughs> if you're watching your sugar intake, it's maybe not, not the one for you, but as a wee treat or if you just have a little bit. I always think balance is, balance is the way to go. Right, and it's so sticky this stuff. Okay, so we're just gonna cream that until well mixed. And then to that, we're gonna add the sugar. So how much sugar do we need? 50 grams. Don't move the thing about. Right. And it says dark muscovado sugar. I've got um, just dark brown soft sugar. I'm not quite sure what the difference is. I think muscovado might be even, like, even stronger. Stronger, the right word. Um. Ooh, that smells good though. So what did I say? <laughs> yeah, I had like a sieve today, honestly. <laughs> 50 grams of sugar. Oh, it's all happening. Timer's going mad, right? Hold on. Okay. Right. I'm gonna say our veg are good, so I'm gonna take them out and just put them to the side just now because I'll. Whew, that's hot. <laughs> um, because I want the oven to be hot for the TikTok pudding. Oh, I felt my eyelashes melt off there. <laughs> That would wait up. Right, so when this has come together, we're going to add the sugar. And then... And then two eggs, one at a time. I can't remember this actually reached over the last time. It would help if I put you on that view as well. <laughs> That's a good start. So that's what we're looking at so far. So it's not overly exciting yet, but at least you can see that's come together quite well. So I'll just kind of make sure there's nothing at the bottom of the bowl stuck. And then we'll add our sugar. I'll try not make you really, really dizzy. And then just add in the sugar and mix again. Even the smell of it just now. Oh, yum. <laughs> it doesn't take a lot, but my God, it smells good. I wonder what would happen if you added cinnamon. I'm not going to, but I wonder what would happen if you added cinnamon to a sticky toffee pudding. I'm sure that would be quite nice. Right, so I want to beat it until there's no lump. Don't need that anymore, or do I? No, I do need that. And I need that, I don't need this. Oh. Another drink of water, it's so warm. 
I would say that's looking pretty good. If I had thought this through, I could have put this where the hob is. So you could actually have seen it, but I might be more prepared next time. <laughs> As I said, this was a kind of a last minute addition to the menu today. Um, and it will be a good one, so hopefully that's enough for, for it to make up. to make up, make it up to you. Is that right? I'm really having a bit of a, a mind blank today, which is good fun. Okay, that doesn't look, yeah, so you have to beat out any lumps. So I would say that looks good. There's no lumps in that now. And then we're gonna slowly add two eggs, which I've already got out. Beat in an egg until fully incorporated. And then once it's fully incorporated, then we beat in the second egg. Oh, the smell of the veg, yum. And then after that, we're going to what the stuff? <laughs> Daisy! <laughs> I, I didn't see your name at first, I just saw the message. I was like, what on earth does that mean? <laughs> Let, right, literally the only things I can say in a Sean Connery voice are Sean Connery and yes. Oh, and Miss Mother Bunner. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> she on my fault. <laughs> but to be honest, yours is much better than mine. <laughs> but I absolutely love the fact that you've added that to your channel point. Like that literally made my day when I saw it. I was so happy. <laughs> How are you today? Are you having a good weekend? How did your fishing go? Did you catch anything? I think when I saw you, you just caught the little ones that you were throwing back, which I was very pleased to see, so that was good. But I hope you caught something eventually and you're able to have dinner. You didn't starve. Better than, no. Yours is much better. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think I'll be adding that to my channel points anytime soon. <laughs> Uh, 10 to 12, that was good though. So were they all just little ones? I don't know a lot about fishing. As I told you, we've done it twice and it was a disaster both times. <laughs> but is there, so what gear do you get that will make it better for you? Is that like other gear to get to catch bigger fish or how does that work? It might just be me being really really dim about it but it's just something I don't <laughs> I would hope so <laughs> I'd, I'd be slightly worried if you're talking to multiple people about Sean Connery impression <laughs> but I do enjoy it it's good fun and it's a good reason for me just to sit and lurk until I've got enough points and I just, I just press it so I use a different method nice so would you use, yeah, because that, I think that's the main thing that kind of, that freaks me out about fishing. Because I really like fish, like I like eating fish, but I'm not a fisherman. <laughs> so would you get like the, they're not metal are they? Like the, well the artificial bait or will you get different kinds of like live bait or what are you thinking? Should this still be lumpy? Mm. It looks a bit weird. Fishing is fun and relaxing. Well, I'm not gonna lie. I was very relaxed watching your stream. <laughs> I thought it was great. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Right, artificial or jigs and lures. Don't know what jigs or lures are, but 
when we fished, it was artificial winds that we used, um, but it was in the sea, so like rocks and waves and everything, and cast the line in, is that what you say? <laughs> I cast, we cast the line in, and it, I think it almost immediately got stuck in the rocks at the bottom of the sea. Um, we got excited thinking that must be a huge fish pulled the, the line out, reeled the line in, <laughs> can you tell I don't fit, <laughs> um, and it just snapped, so the, the bait had got caught in a rock at the bottom and it just snapped the line, and the whole time it was raining, as it does in Scotland, so we swiftly gave up, and I think we then went to a pub for lunch instead, <laughs> which is much more up my street, cast the line, is that right? <laughs> Uh, right, where am I? Flower. What does it say? Is it self raising flower or plain? Plain flower, 150 grams. And have you heard of or tried a sticky toffee pudding, Casey? I've had a guy in here for, he might still be here actually. Um, he, from Texas, and he was saying it's not a big thing in America, but he has ha he has tried it, I think he said. <laughs> I thought that sounded really as if I knew what I was talking about. So that good. You would think I was a fisherman. If you didn't know. Maybe not then. <laughs> I don't, I can't hide it as well as I thought then. Okay, so we're doing 150. Oh, there's my cat wanderer. Come home for his lunch. Had one from oh a snack subscription. And you got a I can't quite forgot what it was called. A sticky toffee pudding with a snack subscription. That's amazing. What else did you get? Can you remember? Or what was your favourite from it? I shouldn't call it a fishing stick. I know more than that. <laughs> I mean, that would be poor. Right, 150 grams of flour. And I've just to add this until it becomes a smooth, thick batter. Yeah, so I'm not going to show you a close up of this yet because it looks fairly awful. But hopefully, once everything's incorporated, it'll look lovely, and then I can show you. A little crisps and biscuits, now. Grandma Wild. Never heard of them. <laughs> no, me neither. And I mean, I like biscuits, but Grandma Wild. It doesn't even really sound like it. You came. <laughs> Yeah, no. I'm glad you enjoyed it, though. That's the main thing. <laughs> I'll need to Google it, unless maybe it's an Irish thing, because they've got some quite specific, um, like, crisps and biscuits. So it's maybe Irish. Grandma, oh, I'm going to Google this, because this is intriguing me. Grandma Wild. Grandma Wilde's award-winning biscuits, apparently. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, they look so, like, traditional. Can I see where they're from? Ah, oh, they are English, yeah. Award-winning. They must be good, then. <laughs> they must be good. Although... The cakes look slightly more familiar. Oh, they sound good though. And was it just the plain ones or did you get, um, was it like any of the flavored ones or the fruity ones? So, so good. They're like elite biscuits. Only the queen has heard of Grandma Wilde's biscuits. <laughs> I'll go for a hunt for them and see if I can find them. I can't eat them, but I'll see if I can find them. <laughs> oh, yum. Oaty, oaty and lemon. 
That sounds good. Fruit biscuits. I'm not a huge fan of fruit biscuits, but the other ones sound good. That's so funny. Exactly. <laughs> if, I, if I find them, I'll buy them and I'll show you them. I'll come on stream and I'll be like, look, they do exist. They are a thing here as well. <laughs> Casey didn't make it up. Oh, I really want a biscuit now. A cup of tea and a bicky. Do, do you still get the subscription box? Or have you stopped it? Because that's a pretty cool thing to have. Right, we're nearly at a stage that I can show you again. In fact, I can probably show you now. Hold on. No, wrong one. Wrong one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I dropped the thing, man. Can you see that? How yum. So it's looking nice and smooth. So I'm going to get the bits off the, the sides, the flour that's kind of stuck, so that it can incorporate as well. And then I've just added a little bit of baking powder. Apparently, I think I've lost my place. Hey, egg, flour, and baking powder. So we need two teaspoons of baking powder. We get a subscription box built from different countries every month. <gasps> That's amazing. And what would you say is your favourite month been so far? I really like the sound of that. I wonder if we can get it here. And if they would just substitute the UK one for the US, maybe. Because <laughs> although I suppose I probably would be able to eat very little of it. I can't imagine they would do a gluten-free version. <laughs> Not that lucky, unfortunately. And this is the very first time that I have tried making a sticky toffee. It's one, I love a good sticky toffee pudding, there's nothing better, but I've never actually tried making one. I haven't realized how simple it is. YouTube is our favorite, nice. That's good to hear. Had it for three months. That's really cool, I really like that idea. That's definitely something I would look at if there was ever the possibility of getting a gluten-free one. That would be right up my street. Oh. Oh. It's so warm in here. Right, so, I think, Oh, that batter looks fantastic, <laughs> if I do say so myself. <laughs> There's nothing better than a good, a good batter, a good cake mix. A few bits just to get off the, the new mixer guy. I'll give it one last mix. And just make sure that it's all away from the bottom of the bowl. Making this as awkward as I can for myself. another remix. Me too, Dino Doll. Yes, I fully, I fully agree. I've been told to try and make it. Oh, banoffee pie. Yum. Please do. Banoffee pie is delicious. I don't know, can you buy like tins of caramel? I'm sure you can. Because that's what I would make. So you literally just have to make the biscuit base and then pour on the caramel and then and then chopped up banana and then whipped cream on top. Oh, so tasty. Although, I'm trying to think if it always has whipped cream. Maybe not, actually. But it's, yeah, it's delicious. If you like that kind of thing that it's really sweet, I mean, it helps having the bananas. That kind of takes the, the edge off slightly, but oh, yeah, so good. Yes, that's the way I would do it. But then that's me just being lazy and caramel something I've never actually made myself. Although I suppose this sauce, the sauce for this is gonna be quite like the, the kind of the caramel, just a bit more liquidy. But yeah, if I've made banoffee pie, it's just been with the, 
with the tins of caramel, some chopped up banana. And then you can just do like a really basic biscuit base with um, just like some crushed up. I suppose you don't get digestive biscuits, do you? Um, is it graham, graham crackers? Graham crackers, that drives me mad that you guys say graham crackers because it's graham, but it's not, <laughs> it's not graham. Um, with some butter, and that would do you. And then just the caramel on top and then the chopped bananas, ideal. For a few bananas in the freezer. I wouldn't use frozen bananas, I would use fresh bananas. <laughs> I don't know how frozen bananas would be with it. Caramel is easy, just don't taste it with your finger when it's hot. <laughs> is that speaking from experience, Casey, perhaps? Have you managed to do that? I like hear you say Graham better. How would Sean Cat Corner say? Graham. Graham crackers. <laughs> oh, it's all going a bit strange. <laughs> I think that's pretty close, to be honest. <laughs> I hope that was loud enough. It sounded quite low. Because it's so it's such a low voice, I feel like I'm speaking really quietly. I am glad you think so, Casey. <laughs> this is the stuff you want to stick around for, isn't it? Um, right. <laughs> Sticky Tuffy Pudding and Sean Connery impressions. Just what you want. <laughs> That's what everyone comes to Twitch for, I've heard. Right, and then apparently, so these are a lot softer, and I'm just gonna kinda squish them. I don't know how much I have to squish them. A bit. Just squish them a bit. <laughs> that's that's ideal. <laughs> it's it's funny because it's like I am hopeless at doing even like mimicking accents or anything. I can't do it. It just doesn't work. But I, I'm quite proud of my Sean Connery one. I don't feel like it's that close, but in my head it sounds pretty good. <laughs> Which is a strange one to be able to do, but probably anyone that's Scottish could do it quite well. <laughs> Sean Connery. Yes. It's uncanny. <laughs> you think you switched over to James Bond? Right, it says a bit, so I would reckon that's squished enough. And then we've just to add all of this to the mix. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh dear. Exactly what you want on a Sunday, isn't it? Can I get that to actually look in the bowl? Can maybe put it up there? That's a bit better. Right, so we're gonna pop our dates and the liquid into the bowl. I mean, that looks fairly disgusting. <laughs> but trust me, it tastes and smells nice. So when it's all together, I'm sure it'll be lovely. And then we've just to kind of beat this in. So I'm going to try and beat it just with this. I've got a wooden spoon, which might be a bit better. In fact, no, I'm going to stick it back on the, the stand for a wee second. It does have a nice colour, doesn't it? So normally you're supposed to use black treacle for it, but I don't have black treacle. It's something I've never, I don't ever have black treacle because it's not something I ever really use. So I just use golden syrup, which I use quite a lot instead of that, or um, molasses I had to use for something. Didn't have that either, so I use golden syrup and it worked really well. So it might be slightly less caramelly looking, but I mean, it doesn't look like a particularly nice consistency <laughs> because of the dates and things, but I'm just going to give it one quick mix together. Let's see how that looks. I think that looks pretty good. I mean, it looks like it's, it's maybe separated slightly, but I think that'll be okay once it's, once it's in the oven, I'm sure it'll be okay. Because I don't think, 
I'm not sure if beating it more. Okay, so you're a chef. If I beat it more, will it be more separated or less separated? <laughs> I'm just gonna stop just now. Beat gently, yeah, I think that's where I went wrong. And then I need, how much batter have we got? just to use like a, a baking dish but I think my other one might be a bit big because obviously you want it to be like when you chop it up you want a good chunk nah that's too big you want a good chunk people work it on me separate or tighten up I'm so not <laughs> me neither <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it as it is and we'll stick it in the oven yeah I wouldn't have thought so but it I mean it looks a wee bit it looks a tiny bit separated, but the thing is, I'm sure when it's in the oven and everything melts and starts cooking, it should be fine. I have, I have no fear. We'll be absolutely fine. I think as well, when you're used to gluten-free baking, you kind of expect things to go wrong. <laughs> it's very rare that I make something, like if I bake something that's gluten-free and it doesn't go horribly wrong, so... I'm used to it and I can deal with it okay, and then I'm just gonna gently grease this so it doesn't completely stick to the tray and then we'll pour a batter in and I think it goes in for about half an hour and then I can go on and make the other bits and pieces and then eventually the sauce couldn't <laughs> be cooking yes it's that's, that's two very good words to describe gluten-free cooking. I think it's it's one of these things, if you have to do it, you just kind of get on with it. Um, and there are there are so many good like gluten-free flour blends and things out there now that at one point it was much, much harder. So I think I do feel quite lucky that it's sort of moved on so quick, so much that you do get there are options to substitute things now that you're not just completely stuck, but there's definitely still work to be done. <laughs> Grievous Mink, how are you today? Happy Sunday. Nice to see you too. We're just making, well, we've just finished the Sean Connery impression. <laughs> and now we're making a sticky toffee pudding which I kind of wish you couldn't see this on the camera because it definitely looks, it looks separated, but <laughs> I think, I think a lot of people might disagree with you there. So, I mean, can you see that? I don't want to spill it. So it does look as if it's kind of separated, but I think I'm just going to put it in the dish and let it cook. And hope that it'll be okay because I don't know what else to do to to fix it and I don't think I've missed anything the butter treacle sugar egg egg flour baking powder I mean I suppose I've added I've pretty much added water to this so it kind of makes sense I think that it's that it's separated a wee bit yeah it'll be fine Never copper corn. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that's that's good. I could I could go as him for Halloween. Cook it with confidence. Exactly. I mean, it looks fairly awful, but it'll be fine. The oven is a magical portal where everything will come together. <laughs> Grievous mink. I think every t like the last couple of times when you've appeared. I've, my, I've messed up. You must think, God, why is she on here? She cannot cook. <laughs> yeah, so it doesn't, yeah, it looks interesting at the moment, but we're just going to go with it. We've, we've got this, so it'll be absolutely fine. 
Exactly, a bit of kitchen confidence, that's all you need. <laughs> and the thing is, even though it looks a bit weird, I'm sure it'll still taste nice because it's all good stuff that's in it. Okay, so that's going to go in the oven for 30 to 35 minutes. It does look like a batter. I mean, to be honest, it looks better in the camera than it does for me. But it's going in the oven and we shall soon see how it is. Okay, 30 minutes. Uh, what do I need for the sauce later? So I need butter. The good thing about the sauce is, it then also requires softened butter. And because I've had it out for so long, it will be softened by the time I come to make the sauce. So we've got... Syrup, butter, and the sugar. Well that was good, I've tidied up well then. What was that? So that was the batter for, it's a sticky toffee pudding. So I think it's, that's what that was. <laughs> that that in that dish was a sticky toffee pudding. So it's made with like dates and dark brown sugar and treacle um, and then obviously just flour and eggs and butter. And it's quite a traditional, like, pudding or dessert here. I mean, if you go into pretty much any British restaurant, they will have sticky toffee pudding on the menu. <laughs> and it's one that I've never made before. It's one that you can quite often if you're in a restaurant and they have any gluten-free stuff. Quite often it's the sticky toffee pudding that's gluten-free. I think because it's got the dates in and that kind of helps it make, make it a little bit more kind of chewy and moist that you don't need a huge amount of flour, so it's not like a normal cake. Yeah, so quite often, if I get a gluten-free dessert option, it will either be a brownie or a sticky toffee pudding. Never had that. Yeah, I don't, I do think it is a British thing, even in, I'm trying to think, even in other places I've been in Europe, I've never seen it. So I think it must be quite a traditionally British dish, but it's lovely. And then once you've made the, the pudding itself, you poke little holes on the top and you make a caramel sauce and you pour a little bit of the caramel into the, the little holes that you poked and then you serve it with the sauce when you're finished and normally like a scoop of ice cream. So it's, it's, it's a very nice pudding. Right, what am I doing now? So I'm gonna do the soup. And if we could all cross our fingers that the pudding's gonna look okay. <laughs> right, I'll show you the, where's my thing? I'll show you the roasted veg. So this is gonna make the base of our soup. That looks pretty good. So that's just chopped up tomatoes, chopped up red peppers, chopped up onions, some squashed garlic some mixed herbs and some pepper. Was that it? I think that was it. So that's gonna be like our base to the roasted red pepper and tomato soup. And as I said before, you could use just like a jar of the roasted red peppers. I didn't have any. Um, plus I think it tastes a bit nicer if you actually use the proper one. Um, but if you want to make it really quickly, just use some of the tinned ones and a tin of like the chopped tomatoes, some stock, really nice. <laughs> a lot of toffee candy bars, yeah. So this is, it's more, I would say it's probably more like caramel rather than toffee because normally toffee you think of as being like solid um, or a lot harder, but it's, I would say it's probably more like caramel. But you'll see it soon, hopefully. It shouldn't take me too long. Best pudding ever. Yes, I agree. <laughs> nice roasted veggies. Yeah, I do love a good roasted veg. I, I made a huge pot of roasted veg for my dinner last night. And literally just everything I could find in the fridge, chopped it up, put it in the, the tray. A little bit of oil, some mixed herbs. 
And then when I was finished, just before the end, I put a little bit of cream on top and some like broken up feta. Put it back under the grill for about five minutes. Oh, so tasty. Rant and Andy, hello, how are you? Happy Sunday, nice to have you here. I hope you're doing well. Yeah, that's not hot anymore, it's been out that long. So I'm gonna pop, let me think. Uh, da, da, da. Right, I'm gonna just pop this in the pot and I'm gonna finally chop up some celery, mainly because I had celery that looks a bit sad. I think it's probably more bendy than it should be, but I reckon for a soup it'll still be fine and I don't want to throw it out, so it's gonna get chopped up and put in the soup. Maybe I'll try to make some sticky Oh, Aww. Oh, thank you very much, Julian, and welcome to the confetti clan, Casey. <laughs> yes, you should try and make some. It's it's really not that complicated, and I'm sure you would be absolutely fine with it. I don't think you would have any problems. <laughs> Although, maybe wait until we see how it looks when it's finished, and then you can decide. <laughs> how did you bake? It was really, really nice. Gravy Mink, thank you very much for asking. It was raining and so cold. So, so cold but it was really nice to just see people again um, and we just all sat in the garden like separated from each other and we all had our own little cups with our names on so that nothing got passed around or anything so we were as safe as physically possible um, and it was it was really really nice although after it I thought I'm gonna like I'm never gonna be warm ever again <laughs> I felt like I was cold right through to my bones but no, it was lovely. Really, really good fun. It's really nice. Yeah. Oh, I love that. It's been such a good day so far for that Victor's mind. Right, hold on. Who's Trebek? I feel like I've missed something. I've not seen all of the Bond films, so that might be why. Yeah, she loved it. And we, we made sure, because I think she was a little bit weary, obviously, because she's pregnant and it's not the nicest time to be pregnant probably um, but we made sure that everything was so safe and and I think she really appreciated that so it was a good wee night <laughs> well, Jeopardy why <laughs> I'm trying to think was Sean Connery in Jeopardy I've never seen Jeopardy oh dear I'm gonna need to go away and watch Jeopardy now I think <laughs> Oh, it would help if I actually plugged my, my hobs on. There we go. I want to put that on so. Ah, it's the Saturday. Right, I don't feel quite as bad then because we don't get that here. <laughs> oh, that's moved again. Hold on. for a wee bit. Alex Trebek. I don't know who Alex Trebek is either. <laughs> is that really bad? Should I know? But yeah, we don't get Saturday Night Live here. We only get little clips maybe on like YouTube or something. But the full on episodes, I don't think, I don't think we can physically actually watch anywhere. So we're going to put all of our, hopefully carefully, without spilling, put all of our veg, that's quite loud, sorry. I'm just going to scoop it in because I'm going to make a mess otherwise. All of the veg in our pot. And this is such a nice easy soup and I've yet to make somebody who doesn't like roasted red pepper and tomato soup. Ah, can you? I'll need to look because I'm sure at one point I was really enjoying it. The, like the little clips I could find, but I could never find any of the full on episodes. So I'll need to have a wee look. It's what most people use as an impression for Sean Connery. <laughs> oh dear. I'll, need to have, I'll definitely need to have a look. See, we would use James Bond as an impression for Sean Connery. Ancient history. Is it? It's not that long ago. 
this. So either I've got one wee bit of garlic and it's stuck in the corner. And I want to get it out because it looks nice and roasted. Come here, you. You've never seen any James Bond movie. That's almost impressive. <laughs> Because I've, I've not seen many, but I've definitely seen a few. I mean, even like the more recent ones. Have you not seen any of those? Right, I'm going to put this down a wee bit until I get myself back on top of things. I'm going to do, I'll do four bits of celery, mainly just because I'm trying to use it up. <laughs> and I'm just going to really fin finely chop it so that it'll cook nice and quickly with the rest of the stuff. So, so much dirt in celery. Nearly there. Yeah, I'm gonna need to cut a few bits off of these, but that's all right. At least there's no waste, or not a huge amount of waste, which is good. Nah, that one's not any good. building is weird I, yeah I think it's one of these things like I never thought it would be my kind of thing at all until I watched I think the first one I watched actually was could it have been Skyfall and I think it was because it was in Scotland so watch Skyfall if you watch one watch that one yes there'll be pics of the food on discord later on so <laughs> so you have a good day, Casey. It was good to see you. Hopefully see you again soon. <laughs> She's the day. She's the day sounds a bit weird. <laughs> but yes, watch Skyfall because I live not too far from there. And have a good day. Thanks for coming along and for your help and expertise. <laughs> Much appreciated. <laughs> no, that's that's still you. <laughs> oh, the sticky toffee pudding, I can smell it now. Right, so I've ended up not with a huge amount of celery, purely because it doesn't look the best. Oh yes, thank you very much, Elaine. That was very kind. Right, so there's not a lot of celery, mainly just because it did look a bit funky, so I just cut off the bits that I thought looked okay, and we'll use them. And then I'm, I'm tempted, because I'm not, that's not a huge amount of soups, I'm tempted to add some, a, a tin of, what do you want to call it, chopped tomatoes. I'll add the stock first, I think, and then we can see how it's looking. So I'll just add one stock cube and, yeah. and we'll say 400 millilitres of water to begin with and see how we go with that. Squash in our stock cube. Mmm, smells so good. And the, oh, right, Gravy's Mink, if you're still here, the sticky toffee pudding smells fantastic. <laughs> so hopefully it'll be quite tempting. Right, mm, I can't decide whether to add 
a tin of tomatoes as well or if we just if we just leave it at that I think I'm going to add a tin because I'd like to have a wee bit more soup than that and if I add another tin oops not quite sure what that was no, no breakages, we're okay. <laughs> oh, that's what happens when you really urgently have to clean out your cupboard. Right, so I'm just gonna add a tin of chopped tomatoes. And then we're just gonna leave it to kind of sit and simmer away while we get ready and do all the other bits. Yeah, that looks healthier. So hopefully I would think that would make maybe about three or four portions of soup. And if you serve it with the sausage rolls, you don't you obviously don't need quite as much soup. So I would say that would be about right. And then we'll just leave that to simmer. I'm so pleased with the sticky toffee pudding so far. I was really concerned at one point when it all started to look very separated. I thought, oh no, why has this happened? But actually, I think it's gonna be quite nice. I'm just gonna move things about a wee bit so I've got a wee bit more space. I still need that though. And then once we've done, once I've tidied up a wee bit, I'm then going to, what will I do next? How long does this do? Hey, make the sauce. All right, okay, so I need a bit of the sauce for as soon as the, the pudding comes out. I need a bit of sauce to put over the top immediately. So let's make the sauce. And then you can see the sauce as well. And then we'll make the sausage rolls because they don't take very long. And then while they're cooking, we can finish off the soup. Okay. I might use my whisk for this one because I feel like it's going to be one of these ones that you want to like you need to try and keep together right the sauce melt the butter 150 grams of softened butter but it's going to be melted in a minute anyway so it's not overly soft yet but well, it's not too bad actually so hopefully I've got enough. I need 150. It's going to be very close, I think. Oh, for goodness sake, 156. So I'm just going to use it all because there's no point in keeping six grams of butter. <laughs> so I don't think I need that for anything. So we're just going to go with that and pop that into our pan uh, oh so you just melt it all together that's nice and easy oh oh this is no this isn't gonna work <laughs> 300 grams we're not gonna have 300 grams of sugar let's see what we've got <gasps> you would not believe it We've got about 320 grams. What a day. What a day. When does this ever happen? Normally if I decide to make something, I'm like, oh, I can't do that. No, nope, can't do that because I don't have that. Oh, no, I need that as well. <laughs> but that is fantastic. Get my little treacle spoon. And then we just want to add one tea tablespoon of, well, baked treacle, so golden syrup in my case, which is very much crystallized, but 
it still works. So, so yeah, as you can see, this is not this is not the healthiest of recipes, but I believe in balance. So for a wee treat, it's quite nice. And it's quite a nice one to take if you're going anywhere and you want to take something with you, it's quite a nice one to do that with. Because I don't know anyone that doesn't like a sticky toffee pudding. Just get rid of these and then we can wh whisk that together. How long's the cake? Oh my god. <gasps> oh, it looks so good. I'm so happy. <laughs> if Dinah Doll is still here, she'll be very excited to see it in a minute. So there's only 10 minutes left to cook. And I'm just going to keep moving this about so that nothing burns to the bottom while well, it's all melting and I've got it on a fairly low heat just because then I feel like I've got a bit more control over it oh the smell it smells a bit strange because you've got like a whiff of sugar and then a whiff of tomatoes <laughs> but still good right once the butter is melted, stir everything. Oh, hold on. No, that's okay. We're okay. The recipe doesn't make a huge amount of sense, but that'll be fine. And then <laughs> it will be a shout for sure. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. What has this turned into today, honestly? Right, so once that's all melted, we then need to bring it, turn up the heat, and when it's bubbling and hot, no, hold on, hold on. Right, once everything's melted, add the cream. So how much cream do I need? Oh. 200 milliliters. It definitely will be a shout for short hours. I think I've nailed the impersonation to be honest. Do we make bread pudding? Yes, bread pudding is a thing here. I'm not a huge fan. I've only had it maybe once or twice. Um, I'm not a big fan of it, but maybe I've just... The ones I have haven't been that great. Um, but I think if I like, if I'm having like a dessert, I prefer it to be a lot sweeter and more sort of cakey. That the consistency of a bread pudding, I'm not a huge fan of. Is it something that you like, Mink? Oh, thank you. Oh, that was a good point. I've got no water left, so I'll go and get more water. Hold on. <laughs> Thank you, Mink. Cheers. <laughs> right. A very low heat. Oh, and a heavy based saucepan. I'm not sure that's what this is, but oh well. Once the butter's melted, stir gently until everything else is melted. Now stir in the cream, then turn up the heat. And when it's bubbling and hot, take it off the heat. Okay. So we're going to add. Oh, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Add the cream. Turn up the heat. Not that much. <laughs> Love, yeah. Yeah, the sauce is the best part. Because it's almost like a kind of custardy sauce, isn't it? That you'd have with a bread pudding. <gasps> Look, that was like magic. Did you see that? <laughs> that was quite literally like magic. <laughs> right, it needs to be bubbling. But yeah, custard, that kind of custard creamy sweet sauce. Oh, yum. So good. So it needs to be bubbling, it's not bubbling. It looks amazing, but apparently needs to bubble. So I think I need to give it, please bubble. <gasps> Look how smooth. So, yeah, so that's the. It did, didn't it? 
It went mad, that was mad. So that's, this is the sauce for this. So it's, it's darker than a caramel and maybe slightly thinner, but it's obviously not as like solid as toffee or as you would think toffee would be. I think you need a wee bit more heat here. And it's bubbling and hot, right? Come on. Oh, I'm excited. I just want to take it off now because it looks so perfect. Well, there's a bit of steam coming off it now though. I just need a bit of bubbles. There we go. I don't know why this makes me so nervous. I think it's because you always hear that like caramel is so difficult to make and it's not something I've ever tried before. And this isn't really the same, I don't think. Or well, maybe it is, I'm not sure. Um, and yeah, people say it's hard to make and it can go wrong. So I'm a bit like, oh, it's bubbling. How much do I want it to be bubbling? Oh, yum. I would say that's, that's about there. I don't want to do it too much. <laughs> that's all right. I mean, it almost now looks like it's separating, but see this? Oh my god. <laughs> okay, it tastes fantastic. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake, that's amazing. Right, turn off the heat. So see if you want to just make the sauce, because I can imagine that over some like vanilla ice cream. <gasps> That'd be amazing. So that sauce is just 150 grams of butter. 300 grams of dark brown sugar, one tablespoon of black treacle or uh, golden syrup, and 200 milliliters of double cream. So if you want to try it, and I would recommend it, <laughs> then that's the ingredients. I'll stick the recipe for the sticky toffee pudding up on my Discord when I'm finished. Um, I think I've got one for the soup, so I'll stick it on up as well. I don't know why it's gone kind of bubbly. I'm hoping that'll that'll disappear, but because it's now gone almost a kind of golden, a golden brownie colour. That's quite interesting, right? I'm just gonna leave that, yeah, because that heats off. So I'm gonna leave that there, and then the next thing with that will be once the cake comes out, we're then going to stab some holes in it and pour some of the sauce over the top to let it like seep into seep into the the cake <gasps> two minutes although i think that might be done actually i think i might take it out and see oh. that sauce it's so good Yep, <laughs> that's done. Let's stick it here. So it's maybe slightly browner on top than I would like. And I'll show you. Can you see that? So that's what we're looking at just now. So it's a wee bit darker around the edges, but it'll be fine. And then I'm just going to prod lots of little holes in. 
Oh no. That's not ideal. You bet the wood from the stick came off. And this is how you get it to be like really, it's almost kind of juicy. So it's funny, so with this one, there's actually not a lot of sugar in the cake mix. Because you've got such a sweet sauce for over the top, you don't need a lot of sugar in this. Right, and then I'm gonna get, what? Just a spoon. And we're just gonna, can you see that now? Yum. Yes, exactly. So I'll just kind of drizzle it on the top now. And you can almost see it disappear. Can you see that from there? You can almost see it kind of disappear into the holes. I might actually, I'll do some more. Do a little bit on here and then I'll maybe see if I want to do any more wee, wee holes and then when you're serving it you just want to cut it up into like kind of little squares and then pour more sauce over the top <laughs> I know but that's the thing you want to have so this is just to fill the cake kind of and then you want a load of sauce so that when you serve it you can just heat up the sauce again and then you cut a little square out and then you just pour the sauce over the top. So good. So I think that'll do for that. Yeah, so that so that's you want to make sure you get lots of sauce for that part. Um no, I'm gonna I'll leave that to the side just now because I've not got a big enough uh, oh that's hot. That was silly. Right, I'll put this over to the side and then we can start our sausage rolls. But that yeah, get a closer up one of that. So you can almost see where the little holes. And it is, it's definitely sunk into the wee holes quite a bit. So put that over to the side. And, oh, I'm to put my, my oven back on again. Okay. Uh, and then, we can make our sausage rolls. <laughs> Looks amazing. It does look quite good. I'm very pleased with it. <laughs> I wasn't sure how it was going to be. I think just if you've never made stuff like that, the first time we're always a bit like, mm, is it going to be okay? But I'm pleased so far. And the toffee sauce tastes amazing. <laughs> it's really, really good. So, so that was a success, I would say. Okay, so while I leave these, that could actually go up a wee bit, that's quite low. Just a wee bit there. Oh, yum. I can't believe how simple that sauce was. I never realised it was that easy, or I would have made it before now. <laughs> right, that was clean. So... Now these are the, literally the quickest sausage rolls ever because it's a case of chopping up some ready-made puff pastry. Oh, thank you very much for your follow, Catchman Song. What a good name. And thank you for the hydration, Dinosaur. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, I'm needing this today, it's really warm. Not that I'm complaining, I wouldn't dare. Right, I'm going to grab my puff pastry. Now if you were very dedicated, you could make your own puff pastry. But since I am gluten free, and I mean it, it's something I will try at some point, and gravy's mink, I can probably promise you now that it'll be a disaster, so it'll be worth tuning in. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, I've not got that far, so I tend to just use the ready roll stuff. And this is a just roll, so if you are gluten free and you want puff pastry, I would recommend this one. I've tried frozen gluten free puff pastry, doesn't work. Unless it's just me, I don't think it is. Um, I don't find it works at all. I find that when you, by the time you've like defrosted it and you actually go to work with it, it's so crumbly. Like it's, gluten free stuff's crumbly anyway, but if you've frozen it and then defrosted it, it's, it's hopeless to try and work with. So I would recommend if you are trying to use gluten free puff pastry, use the, the stuff that's in the fridge rather than the freezer. And then it comes in this fancy wee, fancy wee roll, pre-sorted with its own, uh, what's that called, greaseproof paper, paper sheet thing. And then we're just gonna roll this out. And I've got some sausages, so I'm using vegetarian sausages because it's a vegetarian menu. I have used vegan sausages as well before and it was, they were mushroom sausages and they worked really, really well. They were really nice with it. Um, but I wasn't able to get the, those, those this time, so I've just gone for these ones here, which are just the Linda McCartney's. I think you can get Linda McCartney's pretty much everywhere. And these ones are really nice. They do have a may contain wheat, so if you're celiac, don't use these ones. I'm okay with them, but if you're celiac, I wouldn't recommend these. And I've defrosted them, so they look like that. <laughs> and the good thing about these ones is they don't have a casing. So normally if you're doing sausage rolls, you'd want to take the casing off or just use sausage meat um, because otherwise you'll get that kind of, that bite almost when you bite into sausage rolls. So these are good because they don't have that. Popcorn! Hello, happy Sunday. How are you doing? Good morning. Morning? Mm, yeah, morning. <laughs> nice sausage, thank you very much. <laughs> nice vegetarian sausages. Right, this is always the bit that I get a wee bit overwhelmed at because I, I'm trying to work out the best way of doing it. And every time I do it, I forget how I did it the last time. So, what we're going to do is basically chop this in half. And again, if you make your own puff pastry, I am very impressed. But so far, I have not been that adventurous. Right, and then, so actually I might not need all of this because that's quite a lot of pastry. So basically, we'll start with this one. We just want enough to kind of roll the sausage round in and then kind of fold it over at the side. So these are gonna look quite fancy. I think so anyway. So you want about that much. And then we're gonna put some water on that and crimp it to fold it down. And then we're just gonna do that with all of them. And then if I'm left with any puff pastry at the end, I'll figure out something to do with it. Although, nah, I don't think I will actually. <laughs> I think we're pretty much ideal for that. I would say that's just about perfect. That one's a wee bit tight, but almost perfect. And then we'll just do the same with these ones. And you'll have a wee overlap. overlap. Can you see that? So you could cut that off if you wanted, but I just think it seems like a bit of a waste. So I just leave on. How are you today, Popcorn? What are you up to this Sunday? This sunny Sunday? I was very excited for Chef Tony. I saw that he got his, his emote, finally. I don't think there's any way I'll make his stream tonight, though, if they're doing it later. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> Doing some work now on a Sunday. You're not chilling? That's very dedicated. Oh, and I appreciate it. That's that scares me slightly though. 
thinking that people are watching me on a TV. Like, that's, that's full screen. <laughs> it's a bit much. <laughs> Right, and then, so that's what they're, they all kind of look like. One's a wee bit, <laughs> a wee bit tight, but it should be okay. And then what we're going to do with each of them is just put a little bit of water. In fact, I should get a fork first. Chef Sarah is a hard emote to live up to. It, yeah, she really is. That's a good emote, so it'll need to be something to live up to that one. I'm excited to see it though, it should be good. Hydrate. Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> Cheers. Right, that makes me feel a bit better. <laughs> so it's just my dulcet tones that you'll hear. Right, so can you see that? So I'm just putting a little bit of water down one side of this. And then you want to roll the pastry over. I'll put it like that. And then kind of crimp it. And hope that that'll keep it stuck together. Maybe crimp it a wee bit more than that. There we go. So that's one of our sausage rolls and I think that looks quite cute. So I'm just going to do that with the rest of them. And then we'll want to put these in the oven for, actually I've got no idea, 10 to 15 minutes I think. I'll need to check though, I'm not sure. Because I've defrosted the, the sausages before I use them, they obviously won't take as long. So I reckon about 15 minutes maybe. There's something quite relaxing about like that kind of pastry. Here's the next one. And I always think with these like it doesn't, it's not a lot of work, especially if you use already made puff pastry and ready made sausages. But it, I think it always looks quite impressive. So if you're having people over for lunch or something, obviously not at the moment because that's not really allowed. but. If you're having people over for lunch or you're going somewhere and you want to take something, I think that these work quite well because they do look as if you've put a lot of effort in. And everybody loves a sausage roll. Do you get sausage rolls in Canada popcorn? Or is that a British thing? Another one. And then we're going to brush these with a little bit of egg wash just to help them go nice and golden brown and then they'll go in the oven. Not a huge thing, nice, because here they are huge, like it's it, I would say it's one of our, probably, like, our British cuisines. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think the world almost came to a standstill. Well, not the world, Britain. Obviously, it almost came to a standstill when one of our... I mean, you, I'm not sure you can really call it a bakery because it's not quite as, as good as a bakery. Um, but one of them, they brought out a vegan sausage roll and the whole country went nuts. Apparently it tastes the same as a sausage roll, but obviously I haven't been able to try it. <laughs> so you've been gluten free for six years. Nice. I think, how long have I been? Four? Four years? That's the way to go. <laughs> but if you can get, I don't know if you were here when I said, if you can get puff pastry to try it yourself, because I've, I've never made puff pastry from scratch because it it's such a faff and I just feel like knowing what gluten-free pastry is like I'm not up for that disappointment <laughs> um, but if you can get it if you ever see it buy the stuff from the fridge rather than frozen stuff 
I don't find the frozen stuff works at all because it's so crumbly as it is and then having been frozen and defrosted to use it's a disaster so just a wee tip there if you ever do see puff pastry and you want to make sausage rolls get the fresh stuff it's much much better oh I've poked wee holes in that one as well but it doesn't look as bad as I thought it might it's a wee bit there we go so I'm gonna go and get my baking tray so we can pop these on and then we can do our egg wash Right at the bottom of everything else. That's typical. See, it's funny because I would say that of all the gluten free thing or all the gluten filled things, I suppose, pastry is one that I miss a lot. Probably because I find it's the trickiest to kind of find a good substitute for. But if you can find this just roll gluten free pastry, I'm not sure, I don't think it's a British company, so you might be able to find it. But if you can find the just roll stuff, it's really nice. And then we're just going to do a wee egg wash. popcorn does that mean that you've missed the sticky toffee pudding were you here in time to see me bring that out if not let me know and I'll show you again because it looks so good <laughs> I'm very pleased with it oh, a bit of shell Oh, right, hold on. Get my oven gloves this time and not pick it up with my bare hands. So that is basically like a really rich, sweet, treacly, caramelly cake with caramel on top. And then when we serve it, I'll serve it with this caramel sauce. Can you see that? So that is... <laughs> Thanks! <laughs> but I mean, look at it. So I poked all the wee holes in to get the caramel sauce into the cake. And I'm so excited to try it. So excited. It looked a wee bit dark when it came out of the oven, but the caramel sauce is hiding it well. So yeah, that's dessert for tonight. And thank you for whatever clips you got from that. <laughs> I appreciate it. It was funny, I saw today on um, another stream that he was doing like a clipping contest. So he's just getting like loads of people to do clips and then someone wins and I thought, see that's I mean, that would be no contest with popcorn because he would just win it all. Calorie free, yes. <laughs> Not a calorie in sight. If only. Right, and then I'm just going to brush the sausage rolls with a little bit of egg wash just to get a nice colour and a bit of kind of crispy, crispiness on them. And then once these are done and in the oven, it's just going to be a case of the blitzing up the soup and I'll, ta I'll taste it to see if there's anything that it's missing, if it needs any more seasoning or anything. But because we seasoned the veg before we roasted it, I think it should be, and obviously it's got stock in it, I think it should be fine. 
and you could leave it chunky but I much prefer a smooth soup apart from if it's lentil I like a chunky lentil soup but anything else and I much prefer it if it's if it's been all blitzed up sad one. <laughs> there we go. Hey, right, I should really have checked how long this takes in the oven because <laughs> I'm not honestly too sure. I'm going to check the box again. What does the box say? to 20 minutes. Oh, I nearly forgot something. I don't know if this actually does anything apart from make it look nice. But that's enough for me. Can you? Oh, I don't know if you can see that. So I'm just putting, I think this also helps to get some steam out. Although I'm not sure you actually need it because there's holes at either end. So. <laughs> But I think it looks nice once it's baked and it's got a wee slits in it. So we're just going to go with it. Stuck. Here we go. I'd say they look pretty good. Right, and I'm going to pop these in the oven. We'll go for 15 minutes and then I can check them and see how they're looking. And that's at 180 degrees, which I'm pretty sure is 100, no, 350 Fahrenheit. I think that's the only one that I actually know because that's what I use for absolutely everything. And I put that on my blog post for any Americans <laughs> or any, what is it, Imperial measurement users. I'm just going to get rid of a couple of these bowls just out of the road so that I've not got too much to do when I'm finished. I'm going out for dinner. Well, going to family for dinner so hopefully they'll be quite pleased when I bring a sticky toffee pudding for dessert because it's always nice to bring something with you <laughs> this is like Sarah's stream where she just did the dishes for about an hour Okay. Right, I don't need the rest of that. And I don't need that either. Good. Excuse me while well, I just have a quick a quick wipe down because then it means I've not got my full kitchen to tidy up once I'm finished saves me a wee bit of time. <laughs> I can quite often, I'll stream and I'll have made, I mean I'll have made a few, a few bits and pieces and by the time I'm finished and have eaten whatever I've made, it can quite often take me about an hour, if not longer, to clear up my kitchen again. So I'm ahead of it today I think. Okay, don't need that anymore either. So now I'm just going to get my hand blended out and <laughs> Grievous Mink if you're still here I feel um, I feel bad because every time I think that's like three or four streams I've used this hand blender and I feel like I'm kind of rubbing it in now. Yeah I think I've, I think I've put them to sleep popcorn. <laughs> no we're all good it's a Sunday. Sunday's chilled out. I'm quite happy if people just want to put me on in the background. 
And I can talk to myself and I can talk to you, so it's fine. <laughs> That's it, it's a Sunday. It's all good. That's what it's supposed to be, isn't it? A nice chilled out Sunday. Apart from folk who are working, which is a bit mad. Say, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Not to worry. It's nice to have you pop in every now and then anyway. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's a good soup. So that, I think you get so much flavour by roasting everything first. So if you've got the time, definitely do that. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to pop my mic off for a second or two just because I'm going to blitz the soup and it's quite loud and it'll be quite close to my mic so I don't want to deafen you all. So I will be back in about two minutes. I will do. Thank you, Popcorn. <laughs> So I can unmute myself now. So that's our nice blitzed soup. And I don't know why, I just think that soup tastes much nicer when it's blitzed like that. So I think I'm going to taste it once more now that it's the right consistency and see if there's anything else I want to add. The only thing I'm thinking is maybe a tiny bit of sugar. Because when you cook with tomatoes, quite often you find that you need to add a little bit of sugar because it works quite well with them. So I think I'm going to add a little bit of sugar. And I think that'll probably be enough. I think I'll then be quite happy with it. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> I just don't want to deafen you all with my with my blitzing. Right, so not a huge amount of sugar. I'm just gonna give it that was about a teaspoon just to see if that's enough. I mean can you see how smooth and can did that just spurt into the cream? I think it did. Not the cream, the sauce. Oops. I just suddenly thought, was that the right spoon or have I used the soft spoon for the soup? Well that would put a bit of sugar on it I suppose. Dear oh dear. Right, let's try it now. You're very welcome. Well that's lovely. 
Mm-hmm. If I do say so myself, I think that's that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yep, I'm happy with that. That's nice of you. Yes, I'm, I'm that kind, so I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to imagine how, how loud that would be. Cheers, Dana Dalt. We're getting through the water today. Right. The sausage rolls are looking good. I'm gonna try and put my tray back up here so I'll be with you in a wee second. I need to come up with some kind of a system for my baking things because this is a disaster. I've just got a box and everything has literally been thrown at the box so every time I need to get something down all of the stuff falls out of the box oh, right. and the box is quite heavy I'm still here <laughs> just disappeared for a bit sorted. Um, sausage rolls are slowly getting brown. I'm going to add, oh, I'm going to add a few more minutes just because we want to make sure everything's cooked properly. I thought I did have a spoon for that, but maybe not. So when you come to serve the sticky toffee pudding. Oh, that looks so much nicer now. It's properly come together. Can you see how shiny that is? Nice. Yeah, so uh, normally I think if I was making, if I was having sticky toffee pudding, I'd probably just warm up the sauce because you pour the sauce over the cake. So that'll kind of heat the cake up as well. So, so just heat up this smell of it oh my gosh right while we're waiting for the saucy rolls I think I'll start plating up just so you can see it all plated and all nice hopefully so I'm gonna grab my nice plate again try and not deafen you all As I said, this has worked out quite well because this has meant that I've meal prepped for tomorrow without meaning to. So that's this is going to be my dinner tomorrow. <laughs> can actually put you back on here now, can't I? Uh, yeah, not my dinner, my lunch, which I'm very much looking forward to. And I was thinking I could have had a sausage roll just to tide me over until dinner but I think it's a bit late now <laughs> oh I'm terrible if my bowl was clean teary me it's just a bit dusty is your music stopped or is it just oh no there it is I thought I'd actually managed to finish a playlist. That would have been impressive. Okay, so I'm just gonna spoon. I mean, this is quite a thick soup. So you could thin it down a little bit if you wanted to. But I quite enjoy a thick soup. I think if you're having soup, you want it to be like hearty and filling. And that's what this one's going to be. Here we go. So there, oh, switch over there. You can actually see. 
So that, I just love the colour of that. I think it looks so nice. Um, I unfortunately do not have any basil to have parsley. You need a bit of green for the top of your soup always. I've not got any basil, which ideally I would use. So I'm just gonna chop up a bit of a spring onion, because I think that'd be quite nice in it as well. So we're just gonna chop up a bit of that. Just to get a bit of colour. Yeah, but ideally I think you would want to use basil. I did have some in the garden growing at one point, but my vegetable garden has been a disaster this year, so we'll not talk anymore about it. <laughs> it's quite depressing, actually. bit that I enjoy, just putting it all together and making it look nice. Put a tiny bit of cream on the top and then how will I do the sticky toffee? I'll probably get a wee. Unfortunately I don't have any ice cream which is a bit sad. But I've got some cream left, so I'll probably just use that. I'll do this here so I can show you it while I'm doing it. Yep, we're cool enough here. So that's our so oh look at it. <laughs> oh I'm so pleased. And I saw That's too big, far too big. Because I saw a, a YouTube video this morning and they said that to use, so we've got one of these, like, it's basically like a kind of shovel that you would use if you're like deep, or if you're stir frying stuff in a wok normally. And we watched this YouTube video and the guy said that this is really good if you've got like lasagna, that you can get like a chunk of lasagna out. But I think his might have been a bit smaller because that looks excessive. Like that's a huge chunk of lasagna. So I maybe need to get a slightly smaller one. I'm just gonna turn my sausage rolls around because my oven's a bit lopsided. Oh, they're looking so good though. Yeah, they won't be much longer. Just a few minutes. And that gives us time to plate up the rest of this anyway. So how many portions do we reckon we get from this? I think the recipe said nine, if I remember. It's not on here, but I think it said nine. That seems like quite a small portion, so does it not? <laughs> yeah. Six seems quite large. We'll do it, we'll do nine, and then we can always go back for seconds. Out without making a mess of everything else. Come on! There we go. So that's what it looks like inside. How good does that look? So nice and kind of moist. You can see the wee baits in there as well. And it smells fantastic. So that's going in our bowl, pop this out the road for the meantime. Mm. Yeah, the nice thing about this is it's not overly sweet, 
Like the cake itself is really not that sweet. But as soon as you put the sauce on, that's a whole other story. <laughs> oh, and it's, it's almost kind of thickened up now as well. So if I show you here, can you see that it's, it's definitely kind of thickened up a wee bit? And it's so nice and like glossy. So I'm gonna pour some of this over the top. Try and not, oh, spill it on the floor. <laughs> Oops. And then I think I would normally serve this with ice cream, but I don't have any vanilla ice cream. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of cream on the side. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Can you see the beauty of that? Yum. So I'll put the cream in just before I'm gonna take pictures just to make sure it looks as nice as physically possible. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's a pretty tasty sticky toffee pudding. That was good for our first attempt. I wasn't sure how it would go. I had heard it was a fairly straightforward recipe, but because I hadn't made it before, I was a bit like, mmm. But heaven on a plate, exactly. Right, so that's ready. And then we've got our soup here. That we just need to put that on that one, maybe. I just need my sausage rolls now. Hopefully that's them done. Yeah, these look pretty good. Nah, can I get these in? And there's our sausage rolls. So they've been in about 20 minutes now. And they definitely do look a lot more golden brown for me than they do on the camera. So I'm gonna put a couple on the plate. Excuse me, a couple on the plate and hope that you can see it a bit better. I'll pick two good ones. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> right. So, can you see those? So you really, ideally, you need the egg wash for the top because it just, it makes them look so much nicer. So I'm gonna just finish off my presentation slightly. A tiny little bit. cream over that just for a bit of colour and then a spoon for this one amazing thank you <laughs> yeah this is it's a good one because it does like if you serve that to someone when they came to yours for lunch they'd be like that's really impressive <laughs> but it's not actually that difficult at all Plus it's all pretty tasty. And there's just a wee bit of cream on the side of the sticky toffee pudding as well. There we go. So I would say I'm pretty happy with that. What did you forget? <laughs> just a clip. Done. I'm going to get rid of my board.
we both in there. Oh, I'm so excited. I really want to eat all of this right now. We get a few good photos. Nice. Come to your house. You're more than welcome. <laughs> so I don't know if I can put it. You're not going to see it as well here, but nah, I'll leave it there. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, that's what I quite enjoy trying to do is I feel like people that are gluten free, it's not our choice normally. Um, it's something we have to live with to make ourselves feel better. So I don't feel that it's fair that we shouldn't be able to enjoy nice food as well. So I do enjoy trying to like put together some stuff that as many people as possible can eat. And yeah, this is one of my favorites. This lunch, I absolutely love. I'm going to be a bit close now. Um, I absolutely love this and I'm so pleased with, I'm actually, I'm going to try a bit of the sticky toffee pudding just while we're here, just with all the bits. Because it's it's literally just looking at me. Oh my God. And you, you don't even have to like chew that. Mmm. Mmm, nom nom nom. Yeah. Very pleased with that. So I hope you all enjoyed as well. I will leave the recipe I mean, there's not really a recipe for the sausage rolls, <laughs> um, but I'll leave a recipe for the one that I used for the sticky toffee pudding, and I can change it. Like, I'll, I'll write in it what I changed to make it gluten-free and what I kind of used because I didn't have the other stuff. And I've got, that's my recipe for the soup, so I'll pop that one on the Discord as well. Nom, 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 yes. <laughs> nom, nom, nom. <laughs> Very nice. And I could just eat dessert for dinner now. So yes, so it was it was so lovely to have you all here again. Thank you, Popcorn and Ealing, for the noms. <laughs> I hope you did enjoy it. Um, and do let me know if you try any of it, because I'm always interested to see how other people got on with it. Thank you, Tron, if you're still here for all the gifted subs. Again, you're far too good to us. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it. I'm going to jump over and see if there's anyone on... Turn around that way so you can see if there's anyone streaming just now that we could go and visit and then I can go and enjoy my bits and pieces here. Um, if anyone knows of anyone that's online let me know and if not I'll have a wee look at my... Who's on? Who's on? Oh Bird Bass is on. He was... How do we feel about a bit of music now? Because I was chatting a wee to Bird Bath earlier and I'm sure he would love it. Let me see if he's actually on yet or if he's just starting up. Oh, he's just starting up. He's not actually there yet. Let me see who else is on. What is that, Sean? Is that another wee animal? <laughs> I like it. Uh, right, I can't decide. Um, mm -mm. Irish Kate is on, and she is a food and drink streamer. I think I'm so over. It's so warm now. <laughs> I can't function anymore. <laughs> Uh, bye popcorn, I'll maybe see you on Tony's stream, probably not tonight to be honest. <laughs> uh, right, shall we go to Irish Kate since she's cooking? It's taken so long. Yeah, she's cooking something. 
So let's go to Irish Kate. So how, what's her name? Irish Kate, that's nice and easy. So I'm just gonna pop this in. Oh, Sarah's crafting. Oh yeah, let's go, let's go and say hi to Sarah. I didn't even see her. She was on here yesterday to say hi. So let's go and say hi to, how do you spell it? Right, I'm gonna press the button in a wee second, but thank you all for being here. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you try anything. Recipes on Discord and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And I hope to see you, oh, that didn't work. But I, every time I do this, honestly, I will learn. I will learn. Um, yeah, enjoy your Sunday and I'll hopefully see you on Tuesday next week. Can you press the button now? Can we press it? Almost. Okay, bye! probably stop, stop his distance, distance learning around, around 11, 11 uh, because, because that's, that's the day that I have the um, like um, at my mom's house whatever like cleaning and stuff that I need to help her with so that's my day that with her um, and that's also the day that I have seminar which Well, I don't know if we have seminar this week. If we do, I'll probably just write it in on the top of the top of the list because that'll be at twelve. Um, but since it's online on Zoom, I can probably still be doing things. Oh, hey popcorn! Hey copper! Oh, thanks for the raid, copper. <laughs> um. Uh, how are you guys? Yes, I'm planning out my week so far. Um, <laughs> I just got started. Oh, and you could hear Shedji's playing um, um, Super Mario Galaxy behind me. So I might have seminar on Thursday.